welcome to my channel. I'll be showing you how to make this playful take on the classic beret cap. I recently got a vintage long black wool overcoat and wanted something fun to go with it, so I designed this beret that's a slight modification from the classic round style. I'll make a list of all the supplies along with links in the description below. To make this beret, you'll need some felt. I'm using a non-woven wool blend. Here I've cut two 12-inch square pieces. You'll also need some matching color thread and a needle. Or you can use a sewing machine. A pair of scissors, pins, a measuring tape, bias tape. I'll be using this pre-made extra-wide double-fold tape, but you can easily make your own with some pins and an iron. And this handy tool makes it helpful to do. All it is is a strip of fabric folded in at the edges and then folded in half. You'll also need some thread to match the bias tape, a half inch grommet from this kit that also includes the setting tools, and a hammer. It would be helpful to have an iron and this thing called a tailor's ham, which is used for ironing curved seams. I'll be cutting my felt out with my Cricut Maker, but if you don't have one of those, you can make a paper template and use a disappearing ink fabric pen, tailor's chalk, or a pencil to transfer your pattern onto the felt and then cut it out with scissors. If you do have a Cricut, You'll also need either a fabric or light grip cutting mat, masking tape, and a rotary blade. You can draw your own fun face or I'll have templates for sale in my shop that I'll link to in the description if you'd like to support my channel. The templates can be used for either printing and cutting out by hand or for use on a Cricut. I'll also be making some extra hats with these colors if you'd like to buy a finished one. The beret is made up of just two pieces. One has a small one centimeter diameter cut out for the eye and the other a large circular cutout for your head. Each piece has an identical perimeter, and with the exception of the face profile, is a circle with a diameter of 11 and a half inches. Because the felt is a thick fabric and I want to have tight curves which make up the nose and mouth, I'm going to leave a very narrow seam allowance of just an eighth of an inch all the way around. So when it's turned right side out, there isn't too much of a bunch up inside of the small curves. Such a small seam allowance here is okay because the felt isn't woven and won't unravel, and the seam won't be stressed. The cut I will be making for the headband to fit a small women's size head is a circle with a 6 inch diameter. To arrive at this number, I took the measurement around where I wanted the hat to fit, which was 22 inches, and then divided it by 3.14, or pi, giving me 7 inches. Because there's a half inch on each side of the trim that when being worn will actually wrap around the head instead of laying flat, I subtracted a half inch from each end to get the six inch diameter of the cutout. Once you have your measurements, you can cut the felt out using the method of your choice, and then carefully align and pin the edges of the pieces together with the piece that has the large headband cutout on top. Next, you'll sew the two pieces together. I enjoy sewing by hand, and that's what I'll be doing since this is such a small project but it can also be done by machine if you're comfortable sewing curves with a small seam allowance. Once you've finished your seam, flip the hat right side out. Carefully poke the nose and lips out using your finger or a small tool like a capped pen. You can smooth out your work by ironing along the seam using the curved surface of the tailor's ham to press on. Next, take your bias tape and cut it to the length of your head measurement. In my case, it was 22 inches, plus a little extra, about an inch. Fold one end over towards the flaps, about a quarter of an inch or so, and press it with an iron. You'll use this end to finish your work as it will slightly overlap the other end of your bias tape. Working with the opposite unpressed end, insert the edge of the felt between the middle fold of the bias tape and place a pin there. Continue fitting and pinning the bias tape around the entire opening of the headband. When you get to where you started, your ironed end of the bias tape should slightly overlap your starting point. Then sew along the pins near the outer edge of the fold, as close as you can comfortably get to the felt. To attach the grommet, place the anvil from the kit onto a sturdy work surface with the side with the indentation facing up. Then place the grommet with the black side down into the curved indentation of the anvil. Next, slide your hat onto the grommet with the headband side facing up, followed by the plastic ring with the smooth side facing up, and then the metal washer with the domed side facing up. Then take the setter and center it on top of the grommet and give a few steady but forceful taps. You'll know it's secured if nothing is jiggling around and the black part of the grommet has rolled down a little over onto the backside. And your beret is complete. 
I'll be posting more videos soon, so if you enjoyed this project, please consider subscribing and stay up to date on new videos as they come out. See you next time!